Today I'm going to go over the settings of the Ocean KG805G GMRS radio. I've had this radio for about uh, six months and I've come to like the simplicity of it. It's a good radio to hand to somebody who's not technical and it's a pretty decent radio for somebody who is. You, you can customize it somewhat and make some changes. It has a very good receiver and puts out good power. Okay, here's the box it comes in. On the, my box it says that it's 4 watt output. Now I've heard they're up to 5 watts on about 4 pages of a manual. There's an electronic copy online in PDF version format that you can look at. Wrist strap, the battery, and the, the clip attaches to the battery. That's a common ocean design. And the radio it's a UHF only antenna, it says it's a high gain, but it's a quarter wave. And to me, quarter wave means unity gain in my book. Here's this drop in charger. Notice it does have a temperature sensor, so it will automatically shut off when uh, if it gets too hot. And it's just a little better for the battery. Power adapter says that it's kind of hard to tell, but it does say it's a half amp output. It does take about three or four hours to do a full charge. And as you can tell, you got a temperature sensor on the battery itself. All right, so we'll put it together real quick. Just kind of put the bottom in first and then fold it up till it clicks. And then you release, pull down, push back in, screw the antenna on, volume, power knob. Channel mode one, got a little weak signal right there. And then you have a knob that changes the channel, and you can also use the arrows to change the channel. Got a menu button, exit button, push or talk buttons right here, and then you got a couple of function buttons where you can program. You can make a couple of changes to what uh, functions they do. And this, I think this is like an alarm button. And over here, under this little rubber flap, you have your microphone and earpiece output connectors and this folds this this is it's a thin flap but it's real soft rubber it molds into the casing real nice that way it doesn't stick out at all the push of talk on this is very um, light it doesn't take much pressure at all to activate to push to talk to transmit it's a, it's a nice short radio with the little little stocky body and uh, a UHF only antenna, which is six inches, or maybe six and a quarter. It's a little, it's an inch or two shorter than the, the dual band antennas. And it makes a difference when you're carrying it around. I guess the big question is what can you change with it? What can't you change with it? Okay, so now you wanna go in your settings. Push menu. Squelch is the first choice on the menu. So you wanna change it. Hit menu again. And then you set your setting you want for squelch. And then you hit menu again, and it's set. You can exit, you get back out of it. If you want to go back in, hit it again, squelch. Hit menu to change it. Then you see it saved the setting. I changed it from two to one, and it's at one. So you can hit exit and back out completely. So let's go to some other settings. Hit the function. You can either turn the knob or you can hit the arrows and go to the second one it's a power save function you can hit enter and I have it turned on and your choices are off and on now what this one does what they say it does is it momentarily turns off the receiver and it comes back on occasionally to check for signals and it, uh, by doing so it saves your battery and if you don't do any settings here for a little bit you notice it backs out automatically and exits the menu mode. Function go back in and let's go up to Roger Beep. It's off. Beginning of transmission, end of transmission, both, and off. I have it set for off. Okay. Okay, next setting. Let's go up to timeout timer. You set how many seconds you want your transmitter to, to run before it forces a timeout. It says there are 40 set levels between 15 seconds and 600 seconds. I have mine set for a minute. 
That way if somebody gets on there to get long winded, you know, it'll shut them off to help keep the you know, receiver from getting, or the transmitter from getting too hot. And it saves on the battery something too, gives it a break. So that's something that's nice to have to set for, you know, if you're going to hand it out to somebody. I just like to have it on there just in case something gets stuck. All right, next one, voice activation. The Vox is a voice operated transmit. You can go in and you can set different levels of sensitivity for the microphone. Depending on what kind of background noise you got going on, you can set 10 different levels of how sensitive the microphone is. I have it set to off, so I'm just going to leave it right there. Enter. All right. Next one is called a t uh, transmit overtime alert. It's a setting you will use if you're using the transmitter timeout. This is an alert to tell you that the uh, timeout's about to come. And there are 10 different levels. It doesn't say whether these are seconds. It may, it may just correlate to a uh, percentage based upon how far your timeout is, but it's just a warning to tell you that you're approaching the timeout time and you know better wrap up your, your speaking because you're about to get knocked out. Next one is the voice prompt menu get back in here voice prompt it just tells you uh, you just have a choice between English and Chinese and of course I'm gonna leave it at English next one is a beep prompt okay the beep prompt it beeps whenever you push a button I have it turned on because the sound I kind of like the tone it's not bad it's, on some radios it's irritating and I just turn the beep off because I don't want to listen to it next one is the power on message is a choice of what you want to see when you turn the radio on okay I have it set for battery voltage and it tells me the battery voltage when I turn it on the basic message is welcome I'll show you what it looks like here we turn it off so it says 7.7 .7 volts is what I, I went Chinese all right let's go back Let's, yeah, let's go back to English. Good. Okay. Whew, that was close. Busy channel lockout. I have it off. You can have it on or off. It prevents you from transmitting if the receiver is picking up a signal. Kind of keeps you from running over somebody. Where are we at here? We need to go back to auto lock. Okay, auto lock. You go in, it's on or off. I have it set off. What they say it does is it automatically locks the keys if you haven't used it within 15 seconds so if it's in standby mode nothing's happening that way if you accidentally grab it you don't push a button um, I don't use it next is receive CTC okay this is the CTC SS the tones you set what tone you want the radio to listen to okay right now I have it off okay but you can set if you want to you know if you want a specific tone you go through and you can set the actual frequency. Now, back up. Next one is transmit. Same thing. Transmit frequency. You can set it to. Okay. Now, next, receive DCS. If you're using the digital tones, this is where you go in and it's off or you go in and you set the actual digital tone that you want to use transmit same thing you transmit your digital tone okay the SCREV function this is a scanning mode okay you have three settings you got TO CO SE TO means that it will uh, it'll stop scanning when it hears something and if you push a button within five seconds it'll stop the scanning altogether if you don't then it will resume scanning the co means that it will stop when it hears something and it will resume three seconds after the signal disappears okay se means that it will just flat out stop scanning when it picks something up and it will not scan again the next pf1 pf1 is function key Okay, right here. Options are radio, they're off. <laughs> Scan, lamp, radio, 
the scan access is the scan function the lamp is the backlight for the LCD the radio is the radio so if I push it oops wrong button if I push the FS1 get FM radio push it back get out of it so let's go in and change that change it to lamp okay so now we push it it lights up the back lights the screen I think I like that better so I'm gonna leave it right there next PF2 PF2 is the bottom button let's go in this foot we got an alarm that's it okay next is it says CHMDF there's some, like something's lost in translation because this is a display mode okay so I don't know what, how that correlates to it but to hit that you could choose channel which displays the actual channel number frequency and you can show the frequency on the screen or name so we're gonna go through these and show you what it look like channel hit channel boom it says channel 007 if we go to frequency enter back and it shows you the actual frequency that you're on and not the channel okay and then choose one more time name enter. enter and for this purpose on this radio it's just what I have a program for CH07 is all you get now if you go higher I got some memories in here and it shows the actual names WTLED okay that's the backlight there's different colors you have purple you got blue orange I seem like the purple it's kind of like a, it's kind of like white but you have blue and orange and it looks like the purple and blue are not coming across on the screen exactly the way they look so I'm gonna stick with purple the next button is uh, choices what you call RX LED now that's what happens when you receive a signal you can choose different colors I have my set for blue and you can do the same colors actually you know what? I'm gonna change it to orange I mix it up a little bit change it to orange okay next one is transmit LED and this sets the color for when you transmit since I did orange I think I'll just go to blue because yeah, just have them different 23 is channel name now if you're on a particular channel you can customize the name of it like 22 I can go through and change the buttons I'm not gonna do it because I use the software for this and I want to gum it up it's a lot easier to use the free software they have online download it you will have to have a cable I'll put a link for the cable but you know a good cable is about 15 20 dollars and you can go in and you can just type them away you can make I mean there's 128 memories in this thing so you can go in there and customize all of them and put a frequency that you want to listen to although you are limited to the GMRS frequencies on there but you can set up you know repeaters galore if you got 50 repeaters you can put 50 repeaters in here with all their custom tone settings name them like I have right here if you go up see I have um, you have six characters to name them and while they may have the same transmit frequencies and receive frequencies they'll probably have different tones so I'm able to go in and put the tones in to access the actual repeaters and I got like 41 so I got you know not that many in there I got room to grow to 128 but that's basically the menu settings real quickly here's the menu the menu here's the manual I, I carried around the bag and the letters have rubbed off it probably wasn't a good idea to do that it's kind of roughed up a little bit it goes over the basic operation of everything it's, it, it does read very well um, it's nothing fancy but it does get the job done it lists the, the frequencies the, the the tone codes you have you know, a gazillion of the digital ones 
and something real small and easy to carry. Well, those are the menu settings for the Ocean 805G. I went and do a power test, but I don't have a dummy load, so the power tests are kind of all over the place depending on what cables and connectors I was using. And it just wasn't fair for the radio to do that. Um, I'll, I'll have to make another video on that because my, my uh, findings were rather interesting. Uh, I was getting anywhere from two and a half to four watts out of this thing depending on which connectors I set up to the meter. That's a whole nother topic to talk about. I'll do, some, do it later, but right now I just want to go over the menu settings on this radio and let you know what things you can do, what, what you can change, and what features it has. It has a good good blend of, um, of you know, a couple of bells and whistles, but mostly good features that a good radio would have, like you can, you know, you split tones, and you can add memories and transmit memories into the empty memory slots. Um, those those are two big, pretty big features that some of the competition just doesn't offer. Unfortunately, comes to GMRS, it is pretty heavy repeater based. Although I'm a simplex person myself, um, for the most part, I like simplex a lot. I like the challenge of seeing how far something can reach. Uh, repeaters are more prominent in GMRS than they are in, say, you know, ham radio. Anyway, I hope this has been helpful. If you're looking at this radio, trying to figure out whether it's something that you should get or not get, I like it. I would may actually end up getting one or two more for the family because of the compact size, you know, the shorter antenna. Uh, my B-Tech right here, if I hook up then the Nagoya 701C on it, um, you know, it, it's more. So it's a good chunk more if somebody's carrying it, especially non-radio type people they don't want they want small they want most of them want a tiny radio that you know they can just put up with and tolerate they're not into radios you know but they'll use one you want easy to use you want small unobtrusive and this radio does that so if you're considering you know buying it uh, i'll put links in for some of this stuff i used anyway have a good day